Okay, good morning, good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming along. Um, I welcome everyone to the National Galleries of Scotland's second committee meeting um, of 2015. I ask everyone to switch off their mobile phones and any other electronic devices as they interfere with the broadcasting system, even when they are switched on to silent. However, the committee members may use to use tablets for committee business, as the meeting papers are now provided in digital format. Good morning and welcome, panel. Um, what takes us on to the first item of our agenda is to decide whether to take item three in private. Do the members agree to take item three in private, which is to consider the evidence heard this morning to help inform our preliminary stage report. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Then we move on to item agenda item two, which is the main item of business today, and it's to hear from the promoters of the bill, Michael Clark, Director of Scottish National Gallery, Anne Wilson, the Project Manager of National Galleries of Scotland, and Mark McMurray, Senior Associate of CMS, Cameron McKenna, LLP. I welcome the witnesses to the meeting and ask if Michael Clark would like to make a short opening statement. Well, thank you very much, Madam Chairman. And can we also express our thanks to you and your fellow committee members for allowing us this early start, which is greatly appreciated. Um, the Board of Trustees of the National Galleries of Scotland was established by statute in 1906 in order to manage the National Galleries of Scotland, which comprise three collections, the galleries, the Scottish National Gallery, the Scottish National Portrait Gallery, and the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art. And the Board's functions are, among others, to secure that the objects are exhibited to the public and generally promote the public's enjoyment and understanding of the fine arts. And in particular, the Board wishes to ensure that Scottish art is presented to the widest possible audience in a gallery of world standing, and the Board is very mindful of the advances that have been achieved elsewhere uh, with respect to uh, in, uh, top standard uh, displays of national schools. For example, in London, Tate Britain has had a complete refit, £45 million refit, and uh, displays the British National School extremely well. Our cousins across the Atlantic in America, the museums such as the Metropolitan Museum in New York has had a completely um, a new refit of its American wing. The Boston Museum of Fine Arts has constructed a new building to display its American collection. And of course, nearer to home across the channel in Paris, um, in France, there is the Musée d'Orsay, almost exclusively devoted to the display of the French National School. So this, these are the standards that we're looking to, and these are the standards that we wish to attain by expanding and improving the display of the Scottish collection here. All the space within the current Scottish National, Barry, National Gallery building is currently being used for permanent collections or exhibitions. And it's therefore proposed to extend the National Gallery building into the relevant land in Princess Street Gardens to create approximately 500 square metres of new gallery accommodation in which the collection of Scottish art will be exhibited and we thereby we can triple the space devoted to the Scottish collection and greatly improve the circulation throughout the building. Additional benefits that are anticipated from the project include improvements to the conflicting external elevation designs, improved landscaping in the gardens, and improved disabled access. And throughout the planning stage, there has been ongoing consultation process with relevant bodies with an interest, such as the, um, the City of Edinburgh Council, Historic Environment Scotland, Network Rail, and the Edinburgh World Heritage Trust. And we see this, we hope this scheme will very much build on recent successes, such as the redevelopment of the Scottish National Portrait Gallery, which celebrates Scotland's history and people. And in the modern sphere, our scheme of artist rooms, which has uh, very successfully displayed uh, leading um, contemporary art uh, th throughout Scotland. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Clark. That was super to hear all about what has been happening with the bill but um could we have we have a kind of array of of topics that we would like to ask you um and we're going to go over to jean first of all thank you 
Um, thanks very much for that. I think uh, it's really good, and I'm particularly pleased to hear reference to the Scottish collection, of course, uh, as not, I think, that it would be an issue in terms of planning, but it certainly, I think, of great interest to not only artists but all of us in Scotland to see our collection, uh, the National Collection, highlighted and uh, uh, presented in a much better way. Um, I wonder about the financial benefits to, to the gallery. Do you see the, um, the development as producing more revenue and, and having greater throughput? Well, we see the development as increasing our visitor numbers, uh, which inevitably we will have, I mean a greater number of customers in um, uh, the commercial areas, um, the retail and, and catering. And also uh, the uh, circulation through the gallery will be greatly improved. And um, at the moment, only less than 20% of our visitors get down to the so-called newing area where the Scottish collection is housed. And beyond that area, as I think you saw on the site visit, are offices which will leave um, according to this scheme. And therefore, there'll be much greater access through that area, again, to the commercial areas, which will Im improve the financial resilience of the organisation in the coming years. Thank you. And just further on, on uh, the financial side of, of things, the, the cost of the project altogether and, and funding being in place and what is the timeline for work beginning the uh, ending? Sorry. <laughs> the cost of the, uh, of, uh, uh, the project is a, a little over um, £15 million. We have a stage one heritage lottery pass for a grant of just under £5 million. We have other um, funding initiatives underway which are drawing in funds from elsewhere and there will be a public funding campaign as well. If everything goes according to plan, we would uh, be envisaging breaking ground, as it were, in, in um, early uh, 2017 and finishing round about the autumn of 2018. Good, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And now over to Fiona McLeod. Can I take you through the need for a private bill, please? Um, in your uh, the promoter's memorandum, you summarise the legal obstacles for you to be able to do what it is you want to do, um, and that it's about the rules of the City of Edinburgh District Council Order Confirmation Act 1991, and also about whether it's common good land that is alienable or inalienable by the council. So could I look at that first and perhaps ask you to talk me through Yes, the, the reasoning to that and how we ended up at a private bill. Because for me, I was looking at if the land is inalien inalienable, then only the court of session or a sheriff court can dispose of it or allow the disposable dispose of it. If it is alienable, then the council can, under the Local Government Act of, seven, of 73, change the purposes of it. So can you talk me through this question about is it inalienable or alienable? <coughs> And if the answer is that it's alienable, then why does a bill supersede the court of session? Mr. Clark. Could I ask my colleague, Mr. McMurray, to answer yes, it? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. McMurray? Yes, the uh, starting position is the, the land is currently um, regarded as inalienable common good land, um, which, as you say, under the terms of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973, uh, would require um, approval from the court before the council could dispose of that to the, the national galleries to allow the scheme to, to proceed. Uh, the purpose of the bill, um, which obviously will come on to the, I think you said you're going to come on to the, um, the City of Edinburgh Council District Act, uh, which is another statute restriction because uh, that act is a piece of legislation is required to deal with the, the hurdle in that act. Um, it was thought that what could be done would be to combine um, the two processes into one act, so there's one or opportunity and one um, consistent approach which would allow members of the public to understand and participate and and the parliament obviously offers um, further advantages in terms of accessibility and, and openness to members of the public to, to participate in that. Okay, so it is inalienable land? Yes. yes. Right. And okay. Um, right. I'm still not clear then if it's inalienable land 
how we can deal with it through a private bill and it doesn't have to go to the court of session? Yes, the uh, the purpose of the or the drafting in the, in the legislation would change the status um, of the land to alienable, um, which would then allow the council um, to use the powers under the, the Local Government Scotland Act to dispose of that um, in accordance with the procedure set out uh, in that legislation. Okay, right. So I think that's clear then that th as inalienable through an Act of Parliament, it becomes alienable. Therefore, the Council can dispose of it to the National Galleries. Thank you. Okay. And then the other section of the Bill, which deals with the 1991 Act, therefore allows the Council to dispose to, to change from inalienable to alienable to dispose to the National Galleries, but to limit what the National Galleries can do with it within the terms of that 1991 Act? Yeah, the 1991 Act has a, has a separate restriction. Um, what the Bill proposes to do is to change the land to alienable, which would allow the Council to dispose of it in accordance with the um, procedures in the Local Government Scotland Act, but it is restricted to the purposes of this scheme. So the Council can then just go ahead and, and, and dispose it for another purpose. It's pre uh, predominantly li linked to to what the National Galleries are proposing. Right. And the second set about the 1991 Act ensures that in disposing of this land to the National Galleries, that it's only on this piece of land that buildings out with the 1991 Act can be built and no other buildings can be built anywhere else on the common good land of the gardens. Yes, what's, um, in terms of the 1991 Act, there is a current restriction um, on construction within the Princess Street Gardens which is designed to keep the gardens for public space. And there are certain types of buildings and, and construction that can, can be carried out, but they are predominantly linked to the gardens function as a, as a park. Uh, the purpose of the dealing with the 1991 Act in, in terms of the, the proposed bill would be to remove the small piece of land that the National Galleries are seeking to, to acquire from, from the Council and would take it out with um, the Princess Street Gardens, so there would no longer be a restriction on the construction um, on that land. Right. That's all quite clear, but i got another <laughs> two ways that I th just to explore that it couldn't have been done any other way other than by a private bill. Um, for the Playfair project, you needed an Act of Parliament in 1992 because of similar reasons that we've gone through for this. So why could you not have amended the 1992 National Galleries of Scotland Act to allow this further extension? I think we are... Um, this, obviously, the starting point would be the, the 1991 Act being the... because that's, that covers the Princess Street Gardens. Um, because, um, what we principally need to do is we're trying to limit... Um, the, the bill to all everything that anything that's just uh, necessary to carry out this project, and the 1991 Act also be the starting point. And to remove this land from the Princess Street Gardens would need to take an amendment to the 1991 <coughs> Act, or to, to amend the definition of Princess Street Gardens um, to remove this land um, back to the 1991 Act. So the 1992 Act that allowed the Playfair project to go ahead would not have allowed you, by amending it, would not have dealt with the inalienable versus alienable common good land. Is that correct? So, so we'll be with this. Yeah, yes, this. Maybe it's something that you could come back to us in writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I could yeah, do that. I think that it's probably helpful. easier because it is. Yeah. Um, I know I'm getting very technical, um, but I think it, it's about is a private bill necessary in order for you to do um, what it is you wish to do. Um, the, I think. Can I? Can you bear with me just a second? Because I think that's covered everything. Yeah, I think that's covered all the sort of technical things I wanted to do. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Fiona. And Mr McMurray, if that's OK, we would write to you for to get further explanation of that, if you were able to provide that in writing. Great, no, happy to do so. Thank you. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask um, was about the relationship with Edinburgh City Council. Can any of the panel members um, describe where we're at with that? Did you do that? 
Yes, um, I can update on that. Um, we have a healthy relationship with City of Edinburgh Council. Um, they have been involved in the promotion of this bill um, and are in agreement. And we've had a council um, finance and resource committee. Sorry, you were going to ask a question or... No, um, no, no, I will in a second. No, okay. <laughs> um, there's been a finance and resource committee um, that has approved um, the potential of the transfer of the land should we achieve um, the parliamentary bill. Um, so there's ongoing discussions with them. But in relation to the actual project, um, there's been a lot of discussion and consultation with them with regards to the parks manager and the use of the parks um, currently and in the longer term and also with the planning department with regard to the shape and form of the building, because obviously we're in a grade one um, listed building um, and a world heritage site, so there's been quite a lot of attention. And as you'll have seen um, the day you um, came for your parliamentary visit, um, it's a very, very active um, city centre location, not just for the galleries, but for the use of the upper concourse level, um, which City of Edinburgh Council have control over. Um, so there's a lot of work um, jointly with the council in terms of the sort of management of all of those areas um, and how the public move around them and um, enhance the visitor experience. Um, so it's an ongoing discussion. We are not at the end of the journey with City of Edinburgh Council, um, but it's an open dialogue we have with them. And we've also been in contact with their legal team and the state's team to, to discuss a promotion of the land transfer uh, at the next stage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could I ask a... Um a more um, in-depth question about uh, the construction process with the council about the access. We we did see we did we, we have been there and we have viewed it and um, the access through the gardens and the playfair steps. Could you explain a wee bit more about the relationship with the council and yourselves with regards to that? Do you want Okay. Um, I, the relationship at the moment, the, the gardens close at dusk at the moment, so um, the parks department close the gardens down in the evening. Um, we work with them in terms of if there's any evening events the galleries are running with regard to access to that. Um, there is ongoing discussion with um, the parks department and the arrangements um, with regard to maintenance of the garden grounds. And clearly the work that we will be promoting um, with the project will require a, a greater interface with them because we'll be remodelling some of the land. We're creating better disabled access for them into the garden space. Um, so what, what we're trying to do through this project on the external um, elevations is trying to enhance the park as well, um, the gardens as well. Um, and we see that as a, a massive benefit to the council because ultimately the funding for that is actually for the actual works being done is going to be carried out by um, national galleries. So we see that as a very positive step um, as an offer to the council um, in relation to the, the transfer of the land. Um, that will be doing quite a, a high level of works in the gardens to enhance what's already there. And I think that kind of ties us in quite neatly to yes, Jean's question, question about um, common good land. I mean, often there's a great deal of controversy over common good land being being sold or being used or being taken out of what seemed to be the common good. I mean, I think in this case, um, it remains within the common good in a sense, we're not selling it to a private developer, we're not doing anything that takes it away from public use, although it does change its status. Um, is there a, a financial agreement with the... I mean, another criticism sometimes is that common good land can be sold at less than market value. I mean, is there any uh, financial transaction involved in you between the National Galleries of Scotland and Edinburgh Council? You so I have okay. to mark for that one. Yeah. I, I can say that in terms of what the bill will do is change the status of the land to alienable common good land, which, as I mentioned earlier, would require compliance with the procedures under the Local Government Scotland Act for disposal, um, which um, require compliance with you know best value and, and other um, considerations which um, the Council would have to take into account. And also there's a, a wealth of case law about what best value means and, and what the Council can take into account. With that, but uh, there's certainly no um, suggestion that there would be um, a disposal less than what would be best value. Mm. I mean, given that the plans that we saw, I think uh, members of the public would be delighted because, in fact, there's disabled access and, and we improve the Playfair steps. 
um, and the memorial to the Spanish Civil War is, uh, I think, going to be given more prominence. I think there's lots of benefits to be had from this. I presume that the cost of, of the landscaping and so on will fall within the National Gallery's budget for the project, as opposed to the Council. Yes, yes it will. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a kind of, if you like, a quid, quid pro quo, quo. Yeah. Yeah, on, on that. Yeah. Um, I just have another another question to ask, and it, it occurred to me after, if that's with your permission, Absolutely. Chairman. Yes. Certainly, Jean. It occurred to me after our visit the last time, and knowing uh, the, the, that the uh, better access to the Scottish exhibition and so on, but if we, in the, in the beaten way of things, ex extending space in a gallery might have given an opportunity to consider uh, all of the collections and that rather than really kind of maintain that collection in that space with better access but I wonder if there's ever a, a discussion about moving paintings around the gallery um, generally. In, 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 uh, yes I mean uh, our paintings do move around yeah around the galleries um, for all sorts of reasons and we we redisplay parts of the permanent collection and uh, I mean, at the end of the day, one is creating a, a, a shell and uh, future generations may, may choose to dispose the collection differently within, you know, within the galleries. We have examples of the Scottish School intermixed with the European paintings on the first and second floors all, already, and we'd certainly continue with that, and would also envisage bringing some of the European paintings into the Scottish context in these new proposed galleries because there are such important links that we'd like to, to demonstrate uh, in that respect. And therefore, the situation would always remain fluid. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I th is there any further questions that have been meaning to ask? Is there anything from the panel members that you think that we've not asked and what, that you've had written down aiming to tell us this morning and it's not been covered? No? No. Okay. No, thank you very much. If there is anything you know that you can always yes, write into us and, and get that information. Um, so all I've got to do now is to thank you very much for coming along this morning and giving us some of this information. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll continue on with the, with the programme, which now takes us on to... Agenda item number three, which is in private, and we agreed in the initial stages of the, the committee this morning to take that in private, so I now close the meeting. <laughs>